That's pretty much all I really got tonight, uh, I believe. I think, oh no, come on up, Mayor. <laughs> I think everybody heard that. They work for us. I work for you. Is the owner of the Dodge pickup here yet? That maroon Dodge pickup, are you in the crowd? Not yet? He's in He might, no, he might be with, uh, he might be with the, the, the uh, trash monkeys. That's the only thing I can figure out now. He might be with the trash monkeys and they haven't made their way back yet. That's the only thing I can think. Anyways, I'm going to move on. <laughs> I want to just give a chance for the mayor of the back 40, <laughs> as we've dubbed her. We'll have an election, don't worry. <laughs> but I want to give her a chance to take the mic and talk a little bit about who she is, where she comes from, and why she's doing what she's doing. Uh, <laughs> this woman has worked very hard. She's done a lot of things and, and she's dealt with my inability to return phone calls multiple times through the planning process while we were putting all this together. And yet she stuck it out and she's still here today. And she's also been instrumental in the, uh, those, those awesome um, hitch receiver flagpoles that came about yesterday, which by the way, I think there was two people that were here specifically for that reason. Whoever you two people are, come up and see me here shortly. But uh, I'm going to give the mic over to her and let her tell who she is and what she's doing. I like to call her the mayor of the back 40 because she's the first one to let me know when all of you are unhappy. <laughs> she seems to know everything. She works for us. She works for you. Works yeah. For you. Yeah. It's time to remind her that she works for us. <laughs> there she is. Okay, this is highly unexpected. I'm truly an introvert, so I don't know. God's blessed me with the ability to talk to people this round. Uh, my name is Lisa. I'm from the West Texas oil fields. I own a hotshot company out there. I've been doing it for several years now. Uh, oil fields, a different entity, 24-7, never stops. Um, I was a state co-lead for Texas, and there were several people here. Uh, one of them's here. A couple of them are here still um, that helped put Texas together as best we could, as quickly as we could, yeah. with everything going on. Um, I look back on everything, and the last six months before this all happened, I I have bad luck anyway. So it could happen, went wrong, and things I didn't know could go wrong, could went wrong. And it changed my personality, I thought, for the worst, but it actually prepared me for this journey. And for me, this was, this was my God calling. And he set everything up for me to be prepared to stand on a stage right now as well and speak to y'all because I'm a fly under the radar girl, don't like contention, and yet I've been here for 30 days and I have other trucks out and my guys and it's killing me not to be home to take care of my guys. And, um, but he's blessed me with enough work to be able to stay here, thank God. So, uh, I've been through a lot. I told Brian today, I said, uh, I don't know if you realize this, but there's a lot of women here that have been through a lot of different things, abuse, um, just terrible things, mind games, all kinds. Uh, I started with nothing for the third time in 14. Uh, my husband went into a drug addict stage and just destroyed our lives and I chased him for three months and 13 until he went to prison for four years and I had nothing again and um, I spent a week I remember working day and night fixing this house learning how to do drywall so these people wouldn't sue us just to make sure the right thing was done and I came and started a trucking business with a 99 Dodge and um, I was blessed to get that work in Texas, and that's what moved me to Texas. I moved 15 times in three years, from 13 until I came to Midland in 17. So, and three free states. So, that's just a small nugget of my venture, and now I have this beautiful home with 10 acres and horses, and just a blessing, a huge blessing. And I fight for it every day, like all y'all fight for everything every day. And, um, I don't know 
I've been away for 30 days. We all have. I was working 14 hour days in the oil field and planning stuff with amazing people at night until three, four o'clock in the morning. And that's when we had our meetings, three, four o'clock in the morning. So it's the only time we had time. And uh, for 30 days until we came out here. And then it, it's like, it's still just as busy. And I, and I told my mother, I'm like, I three days into it, I go, now I know why the protesters were the loudest in 2020. They didn't work full time and do this too. And almost all of us out here work full time and are doing this too. And I told her, I said, I have to do this. This is our last stand. This is it for us. And if we don't change the course of this world right now as best we can, it's over. And we're going to have to work twice as hard. And it might be generations before it comes back. We never know. So yes, we have to hold the line. So I'm here, other people are here, we're all rotating out. Um, you know, we just have to hold the line. And this cannot go anywhere. We have to expand off of this, but this can't go anywhere. And I realize that it's hard for all of us every day. And sometimes I tell my shotgun rider, because we don't like to go individually anymore, I'm like, hey, we need to get out of here, let's go on the convoy. And our whole day is so much better because idle hands do the devil's work. Amen. Whether you believe in God or not, there is good and there is evil. Yes. And it's okay if you don't believe in God or you're not religious or you're not spiritual, it's okay. But you know it's good versus evil right now. Right. And it is the most intense feeling People I know that are supposedly atheists have told me something's drawing me to this. Something's drawing, like, it's good. It's good. So we have to be careful with each other. We're imperfect human beings. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to make bad decisions. But what makes us the people we are is being able to see that, acknowledge it, apologize for it, and forgive each other. Amen. This is bigger than us. This is bigger than our egos. This is bigger than our emotions. You have to stay guided and focused on that. And if you can't, go to anyone you see that's strong and go, I'm having a hard time. What can we do? And lift them up and quiet them down a little bit. Calm them. Be the calm. Because it's so easy for us to get emotionally wrapped up in stuff because this is an emotional thing that we are doing. And that is why I know that a lot of these women who have been through these things are here and they are strong and they are here to be, go beyond this. Because I told Brian, I said, the government has been abusing us yeah. for so long. And the ones that don't understand it have not seen that abuse. But the ones who have been abused know what is going on. And we may have got sucked in for a small period of time, but we are strong enough to pull away and bring our people with us. Bring them with us. And if there's people that you can't convince anyway, you're going to have to just let them be. And when it's over, we will bring them. And we will rescue them and bring them back to us. I don't really know what else to say. I just know that's the message. She's a rock star, and I, she spoke with me for quite a while today about um, basically her own personal experiences, which isn't my business put out, that's hers, but, but I, I didn't know that there were so many women in this crowd that have dealt with so much in their life, and uh, I just want to say to all the women in the crowd, I love you and I got your back. And I'm very proud of you for standing up, and, and, and it explains a lot to me. There's so many of you here that are like fierce, fierce women are in this crowd, like fighters are in this crowd. And it blows my mind. So all the ladies here that are fierce, proud female warriors in this crowd, hats off to you. I'm amazed every day by the people that are here on this convoy. And it's like every day I learn something new and, and 
today's discussion and, and, and just getting to know her today more than, I mean, I thought I knew you, but I didn't know you. And so it was great. It was really great having that opportunity today, even if it was only 20 minute conversation, maybe with other people around, but <laughs> she is awesome. She tore her motor apart in the back, greased up all the way to her armpits. So had to be fixed, she said. Yeah. Breaking news: uh, a truck driver from uh, Vaughan, Ontario, was stabbed at a peaceful protest uh, from the Ontario Dump Truck Association in Vaughan, Ontario. Yeah, so I don't know if everybody heard that, but breaking news right now: a person was stabbed at a protest involving the Ontario Dump Truck Association in Vaughan, Ontario. Um, so uh, uh, it, it appears that it was a truck driver that was stabbed during the protest. The um, suspect is in custody. Yeah. The guy that did it's in custody. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That, okay. that brings up a, a, another valid point. Listen, it's very important that we keep our calm when we're out on the road, even when people want to mess with us. Because the only thing the media seems to be attaching to is our reactions. Yeah. They're not showing the people, the idiots that are getting in front of you trying to brake check you. They're not showing the police blocking the highways. They're just showing your reaction to it. And so it's really important that we watch how we react, that we're careful on our reactions, that you just take a deep breath. It's very important. But with that said, we have a saying, uh, keep your head on a swivel. Always pay attention to your surroundings. Something don't look right, it probably ain't right. So keep your head on a swivel. Be cognizant of the folks that are around you when you're in D.C. Pay attention to the road. Be very mindful of the of the situation around you at all times. That even includes here. Be cognizant. You were threatened with a what? A nightstick. <laughs> I don't think he would have stood a chance against you, anyways. Yeah. My point is, is just make sure you keep your head on a swivel and be mindful of how you react because the only thing the mainstream media cares about is when we do something dumb, not when the public does something dumb. They could care less about that. They're all eyes are on us. Even though they won't report about us, they're watching us. They're watching us every single day. And If you do see somebody from the convoy that breaks down, somebody from the convoy breaks down, please stop to help. Don't let them be alone on the roadway. Do not let them be alone on the roadway. It's very important that we're not alone on the roadway. With that said, I got another gentleman I need to introduce. He don't have to talk if he don't want to, but I got to at least acknowledge him. If I can find my paper. <laughs> Butch Early. Am I saying that right? Yep. Butch Early right here. I don't know if you guys know him or not. Butch is a hell of a gentleman. Yeah. He is definitely a patriot through and through. But not only that, 82 years old. He's been trucking for 65 years. He started trucking in 1957. What's that? 54, 1954? 1954 he's been trucking. That's when they still had square tires. <laughs> Currently he's driving an 86 Ford LTL 9000 and he's out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Would you like to say anything, John? Thanks everybody, appreciate it. <laughs> Seriously, round of applause for this gentleman. Today I was sitting for a little bit back here. By the way, the community fire pit, the community one, the one that I sit at and we can all hang out and talk, it's going to happen again tonight like it did last night. If you weren't a part